Hello everyone and welcome back to Sculpting Diva from Overwatch. We are going to finish up a quick couple things with the headphones that we started in the last video. Going into a lot of cool hard surface information. If you guys are interested in hard surface modeling, watch the previous video, part 23. And uh, if you're interested in the Z Modeler tool as well, that's the tool slash brush that I use to create these headphones here that you see. We're gonna continue just like I said, doing a few little other things to this, like adding some color. And then as soon as we're done with that, we're gonna take a step back to the hair that we've worked on so often in the previous parts of this video series. I'm just using one of the matte cap metal materials. There's a few available inside of ZBrush. You can mess with the material, create some modifications if you want. I'll probably adjust some of these a little bit later, but I do wanna get at least uh, a little bit of the colors based out here. Now, one thing I didn't think about while creating these headphones at least, or I didn't really give much concern to at the time was actually creating room for our hair to fit up under them. So we got these bangs up front, these hair tubes that I call them, as well as in the back. And we're gonna be messing with those here a little bit more in uh, just a little bit. But um, taking a look at these, you can see that no, it, they don't fit. But we still have all the lower subdivisions here on these headphones, so it's okay for us to drop down to that low subdiv and make the changes just by quickly masking off parts and uh, pulling and adjusting with our transpose tool. I talked about how we would probably inflate some of these uh, a little bit later, so I do some of that here, just giving a little bit of variance to some of these hair tubes, as well as kind of uh, duplicating these bangs here up front just trying to get these to wrap around the head a little bit better. I'm not really a fan of how they were laying and I'm not really a fan of how they're looking right now at all. So I actually combined some of those to create some variation in size. Again, on the front, I think uh, in terms of representing hair for a stylized character like this, less is definitely more. If you have larger, just cleaner shapes, I think it's gonna end up looking a lot better. The creasing that you see me doing on these front bangs is a technique that I like to use for just visualizing what that shape is going to look like once I subdivide it. Once you create a crease on your shape, I'm using the Z Modeler brush to manually lay these because um, it's just a, a lot faster than trying to use the edge loop uh, crease tool. It's just not working out uh, with the geometry that I have available. So I crease those real quick and press D to subdivide them. Uh, or dynamic smooth them actually and uh, see what they're gonna gonna look like with that creasing on there But again moving to the back of the hair here fixing a few little things Inflating some of the hair just getting it into a, a more basic position I'm looking at the hair and I'm like this is just way too many hair tubes going on So what I end up doing is combining a bunch of the pieces, which is what I was saying earlier so I grab about three to five of these hair tubes at once, just using my selection tool, uh, control and shift and clicking your polygroups will select those for you. From there, I'm doing a split hidden operation and uh, that's pretty much it. From there, I maybe inflate them a little bit, use my move tool with back face masking to get rid of gaps and then I dynamesh them together. Not only am I gonna dynamesh them together as I go, but I'm also going to Z remesh them as a pretty low resolution, maybe around 1,000, 5,000 polys at the most, uh, depending on the complexity of the shape. And then from there, I'm gonna use stuff like the dam standard brush and the pinch brush to start creating some form around those shapes. The tubes, um, they, they're hard to make look good. What I could have done is started creasing some edges on there or just pinching each one individually. But for me personally, the the look and appeal that we're going for is not reflected on the back of the head, on, on this hair in the back. And it's not reflected in the bangs yet either. So what we're gonna do is instead of having all these tubes the same size, we're gonna start creating these shapes and using those tubes as a good base. So it's quite, often that I do stuff like this where I'm in the process of creating a character and the way I thought I was going to do one thing isn't working out so I just decide to go ahead and try a completely different process and I've done stuff like this in the past so I wasn't incredibly concerned about screwing it up but if it is something that's new to you uh, I would honestly say don't be afraid to kind of push forward and try new things because in the end, you always have that undo function, just control Z, you can always do that if you really mess up, but do try new things and uh, 
try to be confident moving forward because confidence is really going to help define the shapes and uh, stuff that you create. Uh, it definitely shows when you're not going 100% at something, which is kind of what we were looking at here for a little while with all these hair tubes being exactly the same. We weren't, we weren't too confident moving forward with that design aesthetic. So here we are trying out this damn standard brush. Uh, the actual brush that I'm using is one of my personal brushes, but if you would like to uh, use a brush that's very similar to it, just turn on the damn standard brush or activate it as well as using the lazy mouse with that. I use um, just the standard stroke with that brush to kind of cut in and hold alt to kind of pull shapes out. From there, uh, I don't do it this time, but you can use stuff like clay polish to clean up some surfaces depending on what your geometry is like. Uh, it can be nice to have a very clean geometry if you're gonna use some clay polish because you can get some, some weird fractaling effects. But uh, again, just using that damn standard like brush, um, it's pretty much exactly the same thing. My brush is a little bit different. I wouldn't worry about it too often or too much though. And then uh, combining those and then using the uh, pinch brush along with that. Moving up to the bangs, I'm going to start combining some of these parts and pieces. I'll slow down the recording here a little bit. I'll still fast forward though, because a lot of this is pretty repetitive information. I am just uh, kind of merging these parts and pieces together, about two of them at a time, as well as uh, keeping some single strands that I thought looked good enough. And you'll see me adjust some of those more as we go on too. So I dynamesh those together and use my um, trim dynamic brush. That's the third brush from the right down there at the bottom or third brush from the left, my, my mistake. And uh, fill in those holes, start Z remeshing, clean up the shape, um, Z remeshing down to as low as I possibly can so that I can get its most basic shape, most basic form. And then from there, I can use stuff like my pinch brush again, which I mentioned uh, for the back of the head. It's just gonna be very good for getting the type of creasing that I'm gonna want here, as well as uh, adjusting just the overall uh, shape of that hair tube. So you'll see me start to pinch this shape uh, down and across, but as I do that, the pinch brush can be a little destructive depending on how you're using it, so be careful. Be knowledgeable of the fact that the pinch brush can be pretty destructive to the geometry around whatever you're trying to pinch. So as you pinch in, the area just outside of that pinch starts to pull up and uh, pull towards that pinch, obviously because it's pinching, right? But um, as that can happen, it can affect the primary form of whatever you're working on. So we got a tube here, and if I pinch too, cl uh, too close to the edge, too close to the surface, the end of that part or piece or whatever it's called, you can start to see that most basic form start to kind of pull in and warp. and. Uh, it's something that you kind of got to be aware of, um, get used to practicing. As you can see here at the bottom of this hair tube here that I'm working on, uh, that pinch shape is starting to pull in there and it's creating a really, um, just it's, it's not an appealing shape. So you can see me going back and trying to correct this, trying to smooth some stuff out. I mask parts off so that when I do pinch the next time, it's not, uh, not being quite as destructive, so sometimes on really narrow stuff, you can't avoid this. In this case, I would say it's pretty hard to avoid it. Just for the type of pinch that I'm getting, I'm trying to use a fairly large brush here. I like using larger brushes for most stuff, but as you can see, uh, it does require some little finesse at the end. And I'm not doing anything in particular here to finesse these changes. I'm using a lot of tools. Uh, just depending on what the situation calls for. You can see me masking off the tips using the move brush with AccuCurve turned on. What that does is it creates a really sharp pull uh, or really sharp point. You can use it to create some spikes or even start blocking out hair. I've talked about it in many other videos in the past, but uh, like I said, a lot of different stuff that I'm trying to do here. Even uh, for some of these, I re dynamesh them or even re z remesh them just to try to get uh, some of those most basic forms back in there. So that's uh, the hair tubes technique or all the techniques that I'm using for these bangs in the front. You can see that they are starting to look a lot better than what they were at the start of this video. Uh, we worked on the hair for quite a while already. I'm trying to show you guys a lot of different techniques for creating hair 
even starting off in one process and then trying to carry that over into another using some combinations of different techniques. And uh, you can even see us here trying to use that curve tube brush again to start to create some more geometry for the hair. I am uh, working with some of these blended pieces that I dynameshed together to create the hair in the back of the head. We'll see how that goes as we work more with that, but I'm definitely liking the direction that the hair is going uh, a lot more right now. The back of the head won't matter too much because we are going to be rendering this from the front, but we will, you know, show off a turntable and everything else, so we don't want it to just be absolute trash back there. But uh, do keep in mind where the focus of your character or the piece that you're creating will be. So if the back of a character is never going to be seen, uh, maybe don't worry about that quite as much as the front, right? Again, going back to that curved tube brush to create these bangs, I mirror and weld them just to get a separate piece and then split it off. Use some of the same techniques with the pinch brush, moving those into place and adjusting them as need be, using a lot of those different techniques that I was talking about for adjusting the tip where it gets really narrow, using some of those techniques that I was talking about for creating all those differences between um, that those tips where it gets really pinched in and too tight in there to use some of those brushes. But uh, that's the basic gist for the hair. I hope you guys can watch this, maybe get some ideas for some new stuff for you to try with whatever you're working on. Hope this information has been really helpful for you guys. Again, like I've said in the uh, past video or two, I'm gonna try to continue to show you guys all the stuff that I'm doing to this character. Maybe not in real time because there is just so much that I'm going through and going over trying new stuff uh, and trying to show you guys the new stuff so that you can learn from it. Uh, again, if there's a new type of tool in ZBrush 4R8, maybe a new tutorial that you would like to see, go ahead and comment with that below. I'd love to hear from you guys. And if you're following along or working on your own stuff, you can always tweet at me, at on with your work. If you're looking for critique or anything else, head on over to the um, ZBrush Discord channel. There's a link for that over on my YouTube channel as well can uh, come hang out with everybody, ask questions, get some feedback, and uh, hopefully improve, because that's the, that's the whole point of this, right? To try to get better, to try to practice more, and uh, try, to, try to help others as well. So with that, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to talking to you again in the next part.